Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Dono, and in this video I'm going to show you how I have found a rhythm to my week over the years. It first began with this simple spreadsheet, and I apologize, I can't find the original person that I was inspired to create this from. It looked very similar to this, and it was based off of Waldorf um, rhythm. And so you had a circle time, you had a main lesson block, and then also there is a grain of the week. Um, there was just like a flow to each day, basically. Um, Monday was about um, watercolors, Tuesday strength, Wednesday communicate, Thursday organize, Friday love, family. And those like upper th themes, I guess, that I had in those cells were based off of another product that went along with the Waldorf school. For those of you that don't know, Waldorf is a form of education that is more holistic and it's very popular within like, I guess, kind of in a more artsy crowd. Um, it does involve a lot of art, a lot of um, singing, poetry. Uh, there was a lot of like reciting verses, things like that. I was first introduced to it. Let me show you um, what I'm talking about. I was first introduced to the Waldorf form of education in college. I was a senior and I took an education course and we were introduced to a number of different forms of education and we got to go in and um, do some student teaching in the different forms of classrooms. So there was Waldorf, there was like a charter school type thing, and then there was public school. I don't know. It was very interesting. So anyway, I was introduced to this form of education and I, I really liked it because of the holistic look at it and how... Um, it was part of a bigger philosophy. So when I got the chance to homeschool my kids, I went back to this and looked to see how you could incorporate themes within this philosophy into the homeschool. Um, it ended up not working out for my kids. They're very mainstream kids, um, but I still incorporate some of the themes into my life and, and how I parent too. It was created by Rudolf Steiner. Um, it was actually someone who was at the Waldorf Astoria cigarette factory he wanted or the owner I think he wanted a school for his employees to be able to take their kids to and he looked to Steiner to create that form of education he was a philosopher um, a scientist he, the first part of his life he started off in like the academic circle he's a scholar and then he got involved with theosophy which turned into and let me anthro Anthroposophy. Anthroposophy. I think that's how you say it. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so it's really interesting. If you've never looked into the theosophy occult practices, um, it's so fascinating because a number of self-help books that we read today took from those practices. And so if you are a Christian or someone that like mysticism or maybe Eastern European um, or even I guess like Buddhism um, it's just something interesting to look into so you know what was involved I guess I don't know what else to say on it. It's just I had a lot of fun reading about it, um, just the history of it to see how that influenced where we're at today and some of the um, the gurus, I guess, of our day and where they come from. So Rudolf Steiner created Waldorf, and he had a lot of ideas. I mean, he wrote so many different books, and a lot of it, so these, like, the rhythms of the day, the idea that you're going to have a certain grain for each day, that came from his writings and this blog, I'm going to include all these links below. Again, like if none of this uh, is going to be helpful to you, just disregard it. I just want to show you how I found the basis for this rhythm or where I got started with it. And um, yeah, and then you can take what you want and ditch what you don't want because I'm going to show you the updated spreadsheet that I included that um, that kind of went after I had experience doing homeschool for a couple of years and also pulled in sidetrack home executive and um, it's something that I come back to a lot. So anyway, Steiner created these grains of the weeks based off of uh, the different energies of each day. <laughs> Again, trying to create a holistic um, approach to life and how you could be your healthiest, happiest self. And I mean, all of his work was done I don't want to say all of his work because there's a lot of controversial things along with him, but it's 
it's done, I think, in the mindset that we can be a more freer, happier society by doing things that are better for ourselves, or I guess if following the flow of nature. I don't know. You guys, it's just fun to read through. So then here's a further explanation of the grain of the day and how it helps. Now, do you need to follow the Steiner method of the grains of each day? Of course not. But what I do like about that is that it's looking at the approach of we need to have a more balanced diet where you don't have, for example, there are some school districts I know of that have chicken almost every other day, and it's in different forms. It's chicken nuggets. It's popcorn chicken. And my son the other day was like, did you know popcorn chicken is just chicken nuggets? I was like, interesting. <laughs> so anyway, this so it's, it's just recommending that you have this more balanced approach to your meal plan or your diet. And it's in the same way when you organize your week that I found that I like to have a more balanced approach to my week. Just like in the book of Genesis, God created everything over seven days and not everything at once. And so rather than trying to tackle my to-do list all on a Monday, I make sure, I think I've talked about this in my planning videos, that I place some items on different days of the week based off of the theme of the day, whether it's that you agree with the Steiner or a more like astrological planetary influence on um, how you approach your day, or if it's just because your kids have after school practice of some sort on that day and you don't want to do like office work when you get home so anyway looking at the day and or looking at the week and breaking it down into themes and a flow has been really helpful now another interesting thing so this is the older spreadsheet that I had that just kind of broke things down and then I changed it, I think it was last year, and I talked about it in one of my videos to this spreadsheet. And I revisited the spreadsheet because, again, I don't use it on a daily basis. I did a little bit more where I printed it out and kind of mapped out my week before I started working in my planner. Again, so much extra work that really didn't need to be done. Um, but, again, it made me feel a little bit better. It made me feel more organized and more capable of tackling my to-do list when I looked at it like this. So rather than that plain spreadsheet, I included the, again, ditch it if you don't want it, the um, planets here up at the top just to remind myself of the energy. Now, in case you're wondering, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, all the the names of the days, if you haven't, I think we might have learned about this in like middle school or high school, but I revisited it last year to just like, why is it that Sunday is named Sunday? And when you learn, say, French or any other language, it's interesting to see the day fit more correctly with the planet that that day is um, uh, in charge of, I guess. <laughs> and so I looked it up, and there's some interesting history. Again, like, you don't have to apply it to your life, but I thought this was so fun to research. So the planets and the names of it, I found this paper on it, which was um, a little helpful, but again, like very academic. And so I did have to find a YouTube video to explain it. (laughs) But basically, Cassius tells us that uh, the Babylonians had, uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but basically that the earth was the center of the world or of the universe. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but they... Um, is it sidereal periods? Again, I'm probably mispronouncing that. But they looked at this, the earth and the rotation and the periods of our days rather than the rotation in, uh, in conjunction with the sun, instead in line with the stars. So where the earth was pointing to based off of the planets and the stars. And so it was in a 24-hour period that there was a rotation of the planets and um, or the, the change of the planets, and it was in a specific order of Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, uh, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, the Moon, and then it went over and over again. Um, it was a pattern. So then, um, based off of the 24-hour period, whatever planet was lined up, was then the planet that ruled the day. So it, 
astrologically speaking, that was the, the energy of that day that you were going to bring to the day. So, I mean, again, take it, use it if you want to, if you don't. It's still a really interesting look at history because it's incredible. Like this paper talks about how over time the names of the planets really have, or names of the days haven't changed that much. And when you look back from the Babylonians to, um, you know, as it went on through history, the Romans and through different cultures, it's just really interesting to see how that's changed. Um, this little YouTube video I'll link here too explains the sidereal day. Again, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so anyway, going back to this new spreadsheet, I have all of that information handy for myself. The color coding is another thing. That is a Waldorf school. The people, the kids at Waldorf school, especially like I think in the kindergarten type age, like the really little kids, um, they wear these different colors or there's like an activity that's focused on this color. So there really is a really strong rhythm to the week. And I just included it there because I think it's fun. And it reminds me of the energy that day is providing. So going back to my sidetracked home executive, if you've ever read this book, it's a little dated, but it's fun and I like it. And it's been super helpful. Um, they talk about the same idea where each day you have a theme. And oh, funny enough, the themes that Sidetracked Home Executive that I had set up really do match the energy of the day so that um, I think they might have had Friday as a free day, but it's more of like a go out into the community and spread love day. Um, Monday is very like, it's ruled by the moon. Um, and so it, I put that as my free day. But there's a lot of fun stuff. And again, like, I don't necessarily always keep it with the energy of the day. It's more of like, do my kids have school that day? Do they have activities? And I switch my themes around. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out in the spreadsheet, which by the way, I have a link to this, so you don't have to make your own because this takes forever. Um, at least it does for me to make spreadsheets. You can go to file, I think it is, and you make a copy. I have the link below and that way you can save it to your Google Drive and edit it as you please. Um, and you just change around the borders and then the colors. This gray area I have highlighted is because it's the time spent in active learning. Um, like things that I really want to get done, I want to get done within those hours with the kids for homeschool. So you can change the color coding. Uh, but going back up to the top, victory hour was something that I changed when I was doing the 5 a.m. club. I have, I'll include the link for that as well. It was very helpful because it breaks it down, that victory hour, into 20-minute increments of just trying to be grounded and put yourself first before your day begins. And I thought this article really explained it well. So I'll add that over there in case you want to incorporate it into your day. Um, one hard thing goes along again with a 5 a.m. club but it's also you know it's mentioned in a number of self-help books where you know whether you're eating a frog or you're putting the big rocks in first um, doing the hardest thing you have for the day first I have that in there and this change this isn't our schedule nowadays but this is the last time I edited in the spreadsheet I will though um, I didn't include the grains here because I never incorporated that but uh, I do like the idea of just balancing out the meal plan like you would balance out your week. Um, I do have this, like, the plug-and-play items for my dinners, though, and that has been incredibly helpful over the years to just say, oh, it's a fish night. Let's try and create a, uh, a creative dish that incorporates fish. And then finally, I just want to touch on the le goûter. Goûter, gosh. I'm butchering all sorts of pronunciations today. But this one was a fun one when we did our French week. Um, I have a video from my family's YouTube channel where we did a, like a French-based cuisine for the week. And it was super fun. And I got the kids involved and we learned a lot about France and, you know, all sorts of fun homeschool stuff. Um, but the that time, I just loved the idea that... French kids, and this is total generalization, but they had a sweet snack after school. And so I incorporated that because before it was like no sugar, super healthy stuff. And now they could have like a cookie or pastry or something like that. And we watch a video or play a game 
um, before they'd go out and play with their friends. So it was more of like a relaxed end to the homeschool day. And I just appreciated that. So anyway, that is my spreadsheet. And again, I'm going to have this linked below where you can just download it or, you know, make a copy to save it over to your Google Drive. You don't have to sign up for anything or any email newsletters or anything like that. I just, I wanted to make it available to you because I'm going to be using it myself and I think it will be helpful for others. Anyway, uh, subscribe. If you do want to give it back in any way to my channel, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that a lot. Um, but otherwise, thanks so much for watching this video and comment below to let me know what you will incorporate in your own weekly flow. All right. Thanks, guys.